extent of the devastation is becoming clear. Victoria's worst fears have been realised today with wild winds. The township of Marysville has been wiped out and at least five people... 173 persons reported missing. The destruction of Marysville is something that no one who saw these pictures will easily forget. The 7th of February 2009 will now be remembered as one of the darkest days in Australia's peacetime history. There are some disasters and tragedies you report on that remain forever etched in your mind. And for me, it was Black Saturday. I still recall the sheer horror of the aftermath in Marysville and feeling so helpless to do anything for the shell shock survivors as they poured into the refuge centre in the neighbouring town of Alexandra. Amid the chaos 10 years ago, I found Steve Guilfoyle and his 12-year-old son, Jake. You I was going right to have one up. Yeah, I'm all right. Right. No, I'm just cold. Just nerves. Have you seen the images of, of what's happened to Marysville? Yeah, yeah, it's nothing here. It's, it's, it's gone, you know, it's, it's, it's gone. We, uh, we can have a lot of funerals to go to, uh, bury a lot of friends. From the first meeting, I knew this family were fighters. Are you going to go back? Yeah. Damn right we are. Yeah, we're not going to let a fire boot us. A month later, 7.30 was there as Steve visited his burnt-out block for the first time. And that was Jake's room there. He had a sign on the door, the swamp, because that's what it looked like. It was just... Actually, his room looks cleaner now than what it ever did. Steve was still trying to make sense of the disaster that destroyed his home. We're moving on, slowly but surely, but we're moving on. We just want to get back home. We, the kids want to get back home. Their home is, is back in Marysville, whether it's burnt out or not. Steve. Heather. How are you? So good to see you. Good to see you too, mate. Been too long, hasn't it? Been a while, yeah. Look at this. A little bit different to when you last saw it. It sure is. Come in, Heather. Oh, wow. What a fantastic room. Yes, come up Beautiful. all right, didn't it? Beautiful. Corinne, how are you? I'm good, how are you? So good to see you too. God, a great job. Finally finished. Steve and his partner Corinne designed this house to better cope with fire in the future. We weren't fully aware because we'd never lived through a bushfire before and we weren't prepared, well, now, now we are. I mean, underneath this roof, yep. there's a big mat, a big fireproof mat that goes underneath the iron to stop any embers from getting in. In the event of a fire coming, we will protect the house and we will protect the people that are in it, our neighbours and everybody else. It is 10 years ago now, but do you reckon you still feel jumpy, both of you, at this time of year and, and, and days that look like they could be bad fire days? All of us, we're, we're more aware, we're, we're, more, uh, we're, we're more in tune with if, if there's smoke or haze or a fire burner somewhere. You think, OK, where is it? Which way is the wind blowing? How many neighbours did you lose? Nine people in the street perished. Yeah, uh, as well. that's rough, and you would have known them all. Yeah. In the panicked minutes before the fire front hit the street, Steve, a truckie, drove out of the fire zone and then fled to safety. He's still heartbroken remembering his neighbours and harbours terrible guilt over friends who died in the blaze. Where I failed last time. Uh, I don't want to fail again. You didn't fail anything. What do you think you failed? Uh, I evacuated a truck when I should have been evacuating neighbours. 
na doon. But that's not something that you should be blaming yourself for now. Really. Heather, it's, it's not a matter of blaming myself. It's, it's a matter of accepting responsibility for something that I should have done and I didn't do. You grow as a person through situations like this, and I think I have grown as a person because of this situation. At the time, Steve and Corinne's son and daughter battled with the trauma inflicted by the fire, and still do today. They won't discuss at all. You, you never even hear them mention the names of, of their friends that they lost in the fires, their neighbours that we lost in the fires. They're not ready for it, and yeah, and, and neither, neither were Corinne and I, but we're the adults, we're the parents, so we have to face it. And you intend to stick around here? Yeah. Yeah. If we moved out, Heather, it beats us. We're victims. If we stay here and prepare and be organised, well, we're not victims. Steve and Corinne have mixed emotions about the 10th anniversary of Black Saturday. So does the whole town. They fought so hard to rebuild but can never forget the past. Those fires changed a lot more than just a landscape around here. They, they, they fractured people's lives. There'll be people that are struggling with it. You said before you can't believe that it's 10 years on. Some of those people I'm talking about would because that 10 years has been a bloody big struggle for them. What do you hope for the future of your family? That Black Saturday wasn't a disaster to them, but it was an experience for them. Don't go looking for the disadvantage in it, go looking for the advantages in it. And there are, for me, there's been so many advantages. Uh, you know, just in, in my, my personal development as a man, a father, a husband. Okay, we got sat in our butt once. Have a look. We're still on our butt? No, we got up. <laughs>